Chuk Mahal, Toitstanat Queen Snas. My traditional name is Toitstanat, and I have two nicknames, Siswais and the indigenous plant diva. So I want to share about traditional medicines and what they mean. And uh, to start with, I want us to pretend we're walking through a forest, a lush Pacific West Coast forest, and to think about what that means when you're walking through the forest. What do you see? What do you see when you're out there? You see r lush, coniferous trees uh, filled with lichens and mosses and ferns. And what do you feel? What do you hear? You can hear the language of the forest. So I want you to, we've done this already. I want you to breathe deeply three times. When you're in the forest and you do that, the moist air goes into your lungs, filling up your respiratory tract, reaching into your body, oxygenating, helping you to feel the medicines that surround you. The lichens, the ferns, the mosses, mycology, all of this is floating through the air. So when you're in a forest, breathing that moist air, the medicine is already entering your body. When we think about what we hear, we hear the language of the plants, the doctrine of signatures, a plant's likeness to our body in colors, shapes, and textures. What are these? What are these things that we see and hear? The plant's likeness to our body is very important. The colors, they catch our eyes. The textures, we feel it. So we think about the reds and the purples and what they look like. When we're out in this lush Pacific Northwest Coast forest, we think about all the things from the, from the shoreline where the seaweeds tumble and roll up. Through the many heights of the forest, the ecosystems, up into the high mountains where snow is covered at all times of the year. We think about the medicine cabinet that is before us, what is out there to fill our minds, our bodies, and our spirits, and to feed the wellness that we seek. When we look into the forest, we, we are seeking things we have on our mind, but things can come to us we don't expect. And on that level, why are we picking it? To make teas, teas that we'll drink, that will infuse into our bodies. Tinctures, we can make tinctures that carry the medicines with us wherever we go. We can do that with salves and other herbal concoctions and infusions. It's a veritable medicine cabinet in the forest and we think about the specific plants we're seeking, what is out there to gather into our personal medicine toolkit. Lichens and mosses, ferns, all of these things I've talked about, the red, the purple, berries, those feed our blood, our muscles, and our organs. We think about how they are filled with the nutrients like iron, and iron supplementation. The berries emanate our blood, and so we're drawn to that to cleanse our blood. We think about how yellow barks and flowers and other roots and parts of the plant that we gather to make teas to heal things like our gallbladder. Our gallbladder can be healed through these medicines, drinking a tea, an infusion of sorts, arnica, how it has the ability to be rubbed onto our hands and our body parts to soothe 
sore muscles, tendons, and rubbing that in reaches in below the surface, feeds its way into our muscles and joints and tendons on a level we can't see but we can feel. This is the language of the plants. They carry the medicines we seek to heal ourselves. It's all before us. Other shapes and textures we see on the landscape come from other plants. It could come in the form of uh, plants that help our skin and help our joints and other parts that we don't always think of. So raspberry leaf, salmonberry leaf, blackberry leaf all have the ability to deal with parts of our bodies like in a woman, our reproductive organs. Looking at the leaves of salmonberry, we see uterine muscles, fallopian tubes, ovaries, and all of those heal. We think about how plants with sharp edges work below our waistline, and how salmonberry, as well as dandelion leaf and roots, have the ability to go in and and heal parts of our body we don't normally think of, of using those for. Plants with textures like mullen. Mullen has fine fur, fine furry leaves that resemble the villi in our lungs and can get into our lungs through drinking a tea and release all of that pain and tension, helping us to cough when we need to, calming an asthma attack. All of these things come into play when we're drinking teas or using these medicines in ways that work for us. We look at stinging nettles, how rubbing stinging nettle onto our hands if they're swollen from arthritis can totally release toxins. I know this from personal experience, having rubbed stinging nettle on myself several times and had people saying, don't do it. I'm like, of course I'll do it. <laughs> I don't want to carry that pain with me. I don't want to give that to the next generation. So I release it. I take that step. I'm brave. I, I encourage others to try it. The natural forest is there as a medicine cabinet for us, as I said. The fungi that grow on the trees, through the mosses, they live a symbiotic life. They share that energy, that knowledge. They take us to another place within ourselves. Even being in the forest, sitting on the floor of the forest in moss, walking through the forest paths, sitting in a creek or wading through a creek, all of those things connect us to that natural world that we take for granted. We don't, uh, we don't respect it enough. We have to have respect for the next generations, the indigenous foods, the wild foods, the things that our ancestors used for many years before us. And I know that's not just from my perspective as an indigenous person. I know that we all have stories that lead us back to our grandfathers, our grandmothers, and remind us how at one time we lived in a better way passing that knowledge on, teaching our next generation how to read the forest, how to glean that information in a way that propels them forward and saves the planet along the way. We have a responsibility to protect the natural world, to assure that the next generations ahead of us will have what we have today and to look at how we live. How do we manage waste? How do we relate to the natural world when we go outdoors? How do we teach our next generation about that? And what we can take from today and bring to tomorrow, leaving a place for our future ancestors. Heichka. <laughs> <laughs>